Okay, this is part five, the end of chapter two, um, class certified nurse assistant, and we're gonna start on page 56. So we were, we've already took about, well, we were talking about hepatitis B, it's right above tuberculosis, and your employers will probably offer you that because, you, and you want to take it, normally it's free of charge, so take anything free, it, so you won't get anything, um, but they will do that. Um, hepatitis C, they actually have, do have some medication. It's not curable, and that's a lie. Now it is. Um, heart binding. Anybody heard of that? But um, actually, it's for, for hepatitis C, and um, take your medications. It is reversed in hepatitis C, which is wonderful. So TB, we've talked about it uh, in depth. Um, remember that N95 mask? Come on down below where the pictures are. That is how it's going to look on your x-ray. You, you've got cloudiness all the way through it on, with TB. That means you're not breathing so well, all those places. Uh, symptoms of TB include prolonged coughing, pain in your chest, coughing up blood, sputum, fatigue, loss of appetite, weight loss, chills, fever, and night sweats. And every time we give a TB shot or a test, we ask for, within two weeks, have you had any, have you been coughing up any blood? Any unexplained weight loss. You may be losing weight on purpose. Unexplained weight loss. Um, Chills, fever, any night sweats. And those are your signs. And definitely call them. Are them signs of TB. Um, when caring for residents with TB, NA should follow standard precautions and airborne precautions. So what what does that mean? You need to put on what? A mask. And it's the N95. Don't forget that. A N95 for tuberculosis is the best mask. Those, yes. They will fit, they, they, they look at your nose, size, shape. They'll look at the shape of your mouth, how, you know, are you small, medium, or large? But they've got, they'll tell you which one it means, but they, they will shape you, straight shape you. You said it was a T-95 or N-95. N-95. And it's right there on that next column there, the N-95 mask. And those isolation rooms I were talking about, that has the air that's coming back away from the hole. It's called the um, AIIR rooms or negative air pressure room, acid fast bacillus room. Um, back in the days, they had uh, solariums and isoleums or whatever they call them, and everybody had tuberculosis because they just couldn't control it. They figured out how to fix a lot of those uh, catching diseases um, by using that different air system. MRSA, we talked about it a little bit. Um, it could be healthcare associated MRSA. That means somebody had it in there and then the nurse or doctor or CNA or somebody went and took care of somebody else and gave it to them. But that is, those are contact precautions. You, you wash your hands and that's why they, they make you put on your garb when you're going into their rooms. You do not want to spread that to the next person. <coughs> and, um, but um, that's what it's going to do to you. Say you get a bad infection, sometimes it won't fix if you got MRSA. MRSA will not let you heal as well, will not let antibodies get to you as well. And um, sometimes it necroses your skin, causes it. My friend had it in his knee, and he got it. Healthcare associated, HA, MRSA, um, during surgery. He didn't have the infection. He didn't have any open wounds or sores or cuts anyway. And then, um, that's what he got, and it took him, I don't know, a year to get that off of him. He had um, antibodies going through his blood. I mean, they let him go home, but he had a machine strapped to him that he had to uh, keep antibodies pumping because it, it ain't no joke. And it gets in the wrong places, and it's very hard to heal up something. And he just had knee surgery. VRE is very much like it, but underlying what that means is vancomycin resistant enteral coccus. All that means is that if anybody's had microbiology, they're trying to describe how the bacteria looks under a microscope. That's how where the big words come from, the enteral coccus. All I can remember, I can't remember what enteral means, but I know coccus is circle. So when you look up under the microscope, it's definitely gonna be some kind of circle when you see VRE. And that's what uh, Staphylococcus, which is MRSA, methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus um, aureus, MRSA. Staph, I think it means group. It means a, a group of, and coccus means circles. So 
a group of circles when you look under the microscope. So that's how they describe and, and distinguish between uh, bacteria, all bacteria. Um, that's their fancy word. But VRE, that's what that means. Um, Clostridium difficile, it's a infection commonly known as C. diff. We talked about that just a little bit. What did we say that was? Through what? How are we going to catch C. diff? Contact. Somebody touch something, you touch something, somebody else touch something. But you touch it. That's another one that you're going to get dressed up to go into their rooms. Um, something happens and there's a spore forming bacterium that messes up your regular internal uh, floor of your stomach. Just like um, if you take antibiotics and you get a yeast infection. I remember the first time that ever happened to me. I thought I went to doctor. I was going to kill my man. I was going to kill him dead. But um, it was a yeast infection. It's just a normal bacteria in your body that, that is there to help keep everything, all the other stuff, to kill everything else. But when that gets out of um, whack, then um, a yeast infection can occur. Kind of the same here. Something happened. A lot of times you get C. diff again from taking too much antibiotics. And then it kills all the good stuff in your intestines. And then it allows C. diff to grow. You actually have C. diff in there, and it actually helps break down all the, the rough stuff you eat. And that's, that's what it does. But when you take antibiotics or something happens to override that, and it takes over. And that's how you get C. diff. And you don't want to give it to nobody else. Um, Alcohol-based hand sanitizers are used, soap and water, all that good stuff for um, C. diff. Proper hand washing, again, you're never going to get over that. Proper hand washing disinfectant. Disinfect everything you can. Um, limiting the use of antibiotics helps lower the risk of developing C. diff. Um, and that's because it messes up your normal bacteria in your stomach. Employer, employee responsibilities, establish infection prevention procedures, provide continuing end services, have written policies and procedures if something does happen. If you do give it a needle stick, what do you do? Um, provide personal equipment personal protective equipment. If they don't have gowns and you got somebody that has MRSA, you need to ask for gowns. I don't want in there, do you give me some gowns? Um, especially if you have to do anything that you're going to be touching them. Um, and a free hepatitis B vaccine. That is your employer's. Now your <coughs> responsibilities, so you won't catch an infection. Standard precautions, follow policy procedures, follow the care plans, use proper PPE. Some people go in those rooms and be like, oh, I'm okay. I don't want to spend that extra two minutes to put on this or that. Um, and that's not following uh, policies nor using your proper PPE. Take advantage of the free health B shot. Immediately report any exposure to infections and participate in your educational programs. And that is chapter two.